Living in a camper van is a life filled full of adventure. And as we all know, the best adventures are the ones that are unplanned. That's what this whole weekend is about. Me, Jacob, going out to the middle of absolutely nowhere. No plans. Don't know where we're going. Don't know what we're going to end up doing. This is going to be an adventure. First night, completely off grid. The middle of Thetford Forest. What about that rubbish though? I thought this was quite fitting being close to Halloween. Let's go for a little walk and catch the last of daylight. It's not a bad little park up that actually. I mean... We are close to the road. You can probably hear the road. I hope that quietens down a little bit later. Just having a little nosy round. We haven't got long of daylight left, have we? What have you found? A deer hole. A deer hole. A deer is not going to fit in that tiny little hole there. Don't it's not even like a proper den. It's just a, a little hole. That, like knows, a, that might actually be for foxes or cats. Or a dog might have just dug it. I do know that there is deer around here. So we may see some deer in a bit. We don't know. I don't know. Let's have a little walk around. Grab the last of sunrise, sunrise, sunset. We're going to grab the last of daylight just having a mooch around. If you have a look on the floor, you can see with like the dog's footprints and stuff. If you keep an eye out, you might see some deer footprints. And I had a look on the Google map and it says that there's a building down here. I don't know what's all about it, but can you see it? Yes. Cool, isn't it? It does look abandoned, doesn't it? Should we go and check it out? But if we hear a voice, I'm running out. <laughs> something here which I have no idea what it is. Look what? at that though. Oh. Uh, Wait, is that? I don't know, it's something, but can you see like this little trail here and it leads here. into the bush? Do you know what that yeah. probably is? Yeah, it could be a deer. That's a random track yeah. and there's a hole underneath the bushes. Is it not abandoned? Well, the building may be, but the sign in front of us isn't. Obviously, it can't be abandoned if there's a sign. I think so. <laughs> I wonder what it actually is. It looks quite cool anyway. What do you think it is, Jacob? Colosseum. A Colosseum? Have you been learning about Italy in school, have you? Uh, there you go, oh. Thetford Warren Lodge. Wow, look at all this. Oh uh, yeah, that's what it used to look like and that's the bit that we're looking at right now. That's, what I just that's quite cool. I like the way they do this. They don't actually know when it was built, but it was probably built in the late 13th century. Ah, so it was built by the monks for someone to live there who was called a warrener. And he basically was a gamekeeper for all the rabbits that were around here. Let's actually go in there. I don't know if you can go in there because it's like... Look. It's, uh, Dad. Oh yeah, okay then, smart boy, we can go in. Looks like there's a fire in here. Oh. Just right there. Oh look, all the way up there. It actually looks pretty cool. It does look pretty cool, doesn't yeah, it? Oh, like, like a fireplace, you mean? Yeah, what if yeah. there's a rabbit skull Because that would have been a chimney or something that goes up yeah. or something like yeah. that. Yeah, that's, Dad, that's exactly what it is. Is it? Look. Oh yeah, it looks like it's been restored because I don't think what? they had those How? wooden roofs. How um... is there glass in here? Glass Ex wasn't made there. <laughs> See, you're getting smart now. Uh, that roof has been re redone just to sort oh. of pre preserve it. But look at all the stonework. It's like all flint and stuff. I know, right? Wow, it is quite cool to be fair. Huh. Should we have a look all the way around it? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Cool. I don't know what those big holes were for. I don't know. There's another board. We can go and have a look at that. Pipe up there. Ooh. Oh, pipe. I don't know, mate. <laughs> What's in the window? Nothing. Brr! <laughs> wait, hold on, wait, hold on. Oh, what's he found? There's another door. Oh, is there? Can oh, is it... Just oh. wait, can you see it better? So there's another door? I think that's a camp fireplace right over there, just back, just Oh, oh back. yeah, it might be, yeah. Ooh. Maybe we can see it better from here. Maybe. Let's have another look. There's the chimney that you saw on the inside from the fireplace. The yeah. Hello. <laughs> I saw my breath. Hey, up. What's that? Oh, don't try and go in there. You'll get your head stuck. The lost industry. Oh, so it was rabbit warreners. Oh, ah, so this area that we're in right now is noticed as the Brex, and it's famous for having the rabbits. Apparently, rabbits were a vital part of the local economy. In the 18th century, there was over 20 warrens in the Bex, which is the area that we're in right now. 20,000 rabbits for the annual call they were delivered the meat was delivered to london and cambridge to the local markets and the fur was processed to make hats do you want to go for a little walk down there and just see there's, what's uh... there's one right there oh yeah so we've got a path over there there's another path just the other side of the building or there's that one up there which way do you want to go uh... <laughs> uh... i reckon we go into the forest and have a look what? while it's daylight at least okay come on then at night time if it's spooky should we come back up and try doing all the whole Ooh, look at this <laughs> try and get scared no but uh, no because then i'll get a nightmare and i won't sleep oh yeah that's a good point actually i bet this is quite spooky at night time actually it actually looks beautiful for it me. does look really beautiful doesn't it i should have brought my phone it now. looks nice with all the autumn colors and... oh yeah so there's a way down there or there's a way straight up there 
Oh, I it's reckon we just go back. straight up. Are you getting scared? No. Oh, yeah, you are, aren't you? No. <laughs> I reckon we just I'm go just straight up. Because we have that much, that we've got not much da daylight time. Yeah, we've got loads of time to have a little explore. Oh, what the hell was that? Did, I meant to catch that. Oh, I don't know. It was like a, a noise, a crunch or something. Maybe there's an animal over there. But we both looked over there, so it could be anything. It, it, it's a squirrel, because squirrels are tiny in there. They camouflage in, camouflage in with leaves. Oh, maybe. They make that noise all the time. Oh, very much. Oh, I heard it again. Or could it be a deer owl. trampling? No, it wouldn't be an owl, because they're silent. But it could be a deer trampling around. Oh. oh. But you're probably right, it's a squirrel up in the trees dropping nuts. I don't know. Should we keep walking while we've got a bit of daylight, mate? Oh, what's that, Jacob? Oh, what is it? I can see. What's that at the bottom of the tree? I actually have no idea. The mushrooms. There's not much room left in this one, Jacob. <laughs> Let's keep going, Jacob. It's going to make me dizzy. Oh, oh he's found more mushrooms. Oh, they're a different type of mushroom as well, aren't they? If you know what these are, let us know in the comments because... Um, hold on. I'm sure they're not the good ones because they've got this little thing on the top. I don't know. That's just my knowledge of them. They're cool though, aren't they? Don't touch them, just in case they're not good ones. I know my limited knowledge of mushrooms is some are good, some are bad. And I don't know which ones are which, so I just don't pick them. It's as simple as that. Oh, there's more mushrooms there, Jacob. Look at those ones. They look like the ones you buy in the shops, don't they? Yeah, those ones might be good to eat. Yeah, but I'm not going to try it, though. Can you walk across that log? I'm going to try, but I'll need some help. Okay then. The other side is thinning nettles. Give me. No, they're not. They're just plants and trees. But go on then. Oh, oh there wet. we go. Wet. Don't be be careful because you're gonna. Don't. Oh, go on. You can do it. You can go past that. Really there you go. Good, good lad. See that little stick sticking up there? Just jump over that. Yeah. On the on the actual log. Oh. That's it. Good lad. Look at you. Now can you balance the last little bit on your own? There you go. Ah, oh, look at you. Good lad. There's another mushroom down there, Jacob. Oh, oh here we go, Jacob. What? See this fence? Yes. It's like a really high one. That's what they call a deer fence to stop the deer from either getting in or out. Oh. I think that might be a fence to stop the deer getting into the golf course. Should we go over there and just have a look and see what's over there? Because we might see some deer. Yeah. Oh, I don't know whether the deer are going to be on this side of the fence or that side of the fence line, but we'll be able to spot it. I just got a notification to say the Northern Lights will be out again tonight, or they're expected low, but we've got a KP index of eight. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, nor do I. All I know is the possibility is quite good. And this park up that we're at is in a zero light pollution area. And we do have a view north, kind of. Oh, this is going to be good. Ooh, there's the van. Let's get back and get some tea. Now you are. It's going to be a cold night tonight. The van's already partially in the shade. It's going to be in the shade in about 20 minutes based on the sunset that's behind us there's not a cloud in the sky last night it froze and we had a decent amount of clouds in the sky so it's, it's going to be a cold one tonight back at the van it's beautiful got a beautiful full northern view so we should in theory get the northern lights if they come out to say hello you never know we've got the air fryer on with some, a bit of grub in for jacob to scoff tonight it's using quite a bit of power at the moment 1.5 kilowatts and that although that's not normally a bad thing i don't currently have solar panels on this camper van and that's because i took them off to fit the awning i was going to put a new one on but then i remembered i've got my shower fan that sticks up there i've got my wi-fi on the back that sticks up on the roof and i don't have the space for the panel that i was going to get so that i had to scrap that idea and i'm looking for a new one but at the minute i don't have any solar panels under here inside this unit you can see just here atom ees i've got the 2200 watt um so the portable power station this is just i've always i've had it for a while i just wanted to bring it out for the next few adventures while i don't have solar power it's well cool actually i've got 100 percent. it's got plug sockets it's got all the usbs usb c's you could possibly want you can link a few together and it's got the 12 volt ciggy lighter on the top of it which i can't really show you at the moment there's a wireless charger port for the top so i can charge up phones and stuff on the top but i can run 2200 watts worth of power off these four plug sockets which is mega useful for if i do run short on power so i can charge it up from either a a portable solar panel b an in-car charger or c off a household mains so if i go onto a campsite i can just plug this in to charge it back up again if i need to doesn't do the dpf much good at all but i'm doing a big drive in like two days so it'll clear it out start the engine and then if i go back around to the actual um 
Renergy shunt to show you what it's doing. In theory, that should be adding about another 300 watts into it, so it should only be draining by 1.2 kilowatt. I don't know, it just saves me a little bit of power. Oh, no, oh, 1.1 kilowatt, there we go. Now I do have the 30 amp DC to DC charger, but it only charges by uh, 300 watts, 350 watts. So, we've got a bit of driving around to do. It should charge up the batteries nicely. A good four hour drive charges up this battery and I've got a five hour drive to do on Sunday and if I don't start the engine the batteries will last about three days so I'm not really concerned it just helps it a little bit. With tea cooked it only used five percent of my batteries that's not too bad at all is it? Sat unwinding for the night we've had our food it's been really nice I'm literally sat on a stool down between the fridge and my double bed and the shower do you know why? Jacobs stole the actual bench seat. If we go up here and whack the light on, you can see we've got the thermal blinds up there from Voyage Adventure Vans. They're really quite cool, actually. But we keep opening this curtain just to try and keep some of the heating because it's going to be a cold one tonight. And opening it up and having a look at the northern lights if there is anything out there. This is the photo I've just taken out of the window right now. I'm colorblind, so let me know. It's funny, the weather forecast right now is saying it's um, five degrees and it's cloudy. This is a northern lights picture I've just taken compared to this is the weather I've just checked. We're gonna wish you good night, guys. See you in the morning. Tell you what, got a little busy here last night. There was two vans parked there. There's him there, there's him there. There was another van up there. There's that van just over there and there's that one that's next to us. But I'll tell you what, it was a good um, it was a good night's sleep, wasn't it, Jacob? Uh -huh. We had a good night, it was nice and warm. We had the heating on all night, just on its lowest setting. And I seem to have cracked that now. However much heat is leaving the vehicle, through its normal sort of bodywork or whatever. You just keep the diesel heater on that much, it's took me two years to figure that out. All these cars that are here, obviously we are demisting the windscreen because we're about to leave to free up some space for the locals. They're all foragers going out to collect those mushrooms that we saw yesterday. Maybe we should have actually spent some time and went for a walk with them so that we could learn more about mushrooms, but it's, it's gonna be one of those things where it's, this color is this, this color is that, and I'm colorblind. But your man next to us just there, he's just told us. Colchester Zoo is only an hour away. That's somewhere Jacob's always wanted to go, but we've never had the means to go there. So eh, we're only an hour away, let's go. Before we make our way down there, Jacob's just said he wants to have a little go on my electric scooter slightly later. So I thought, you know what, what better time to actually charge it up? Because I drained the battery on this electric scooter uh, just yesterday. I <laughs> really did drain it. I had a good old long scooter around. So I thought, you know what, I can always just, there we go, AC on, it's plugged in, there we go. So at this rate, it's draining 64 watts to charge the electric scooter. And I've got 32 hours worth of charge left in this. So I'm just gonna grab the cable, uh, quickly knock it just down the side like that, shut it up, that's charging that up perfectly. And while we're driving down there, let me quickly tell you about this, the Evercross e-scooter, because this is the sponsor of today's video. So this is the Evercross EV85F. The biggest thing that drew me to this was the simplicity of it. Let me explain the whole folding it down, packing it away nice and easy, to then getting it back out, set up very, very quickly. And I'll show you all how to do it in this piece right now. So this is the folding handle. You've got this little locking pin just there. So you pull that up and you pull the whole handle away from the actual frame, just like that, that will then fold. You've got this clip on the handlebar just here, and it clips onto that tick on the actual, there you go, just pushes in. And then you can just pick it up and move it around to the back of the van. Now, for those who don't know, the back of my van is absolutely full of all kinds of randomness. So we'll have a look. If you pull it open, just like that, you can see my van is full. Toolbox, everything I might need in the future, some leveling ramps, my e-bike, and I literally just grab this scooter and just plonk it straight there. It's got a kickstand on it, so make sure that's in. I just plonk it, simple, the doors will shut, and then to get it out, I just grab it, pull it down, get that kickstand down so that it'll stay up on its own, get that clip, press it, and it just folds straight up just like that. Now, as it's up, you've got this clip just here. Just grab it, push it together, done. On the front of it, you've got a 350 watt motor built in just there with its suspension on eight and a half inch tires. It is made for flat concrete roads and asphalt roads, that sort of stuff, which is exactly what I use it for. You see, I wanted something where I could just quickly pull it out the back of the van, jump on it, nip to the shop while I'm parked up in some beautiful location. On the back, you've got your disc brake, but you've also got an electronic brake 
that basically means when you let off the throttle it will automatically slowly start to break you down it can go 25 kilometers an hour fast it will do 23 to 30 kilometers range underneath there you've got a 7.8 amp hour battery and it can take up to 120 kilo weight on the top of it which is perfect for me it's got four modes and this is the main screen that you have you press and hold it to turn it on now it might flicker on camera just like it is but you can flick it at the minute it's on d which is I, th I would assume dynamic it goes over to sport you've got night mode which night mode automatically turns on the front headlights and the back tail light all the way down there but the back tail light if you press the brake is also a brake so you've got a brake light not only that if you look at these you press that one just there you've got indicators both there and all the way down the back just there after the night mode you've got eco mode which again accelerates nice and slow decelerates nice and slow it just eco for the battery then you've got dynamic and sport mode i like the sport mode and jacob absolutely loves this it's just a bell to make it move forward you gently push off nicely and then you push this lever down and then that is the full throttle let me show you that's 15 miles an hour. I've had this now for around about three weeks. I've had to charge it up twice because I do use it that much, as you can possibly tell by all the grime that's all over it. I'll leave a link down in the description down below, along with Evercross's website, because quite frankly, it's not just scooters they do. They've got e-bikes and loads of other electronic outdoor activity toys for you to play with. I love it. <laughs> it brings out the little child in me. One hour later, we're parked up in Colchester Zoo Car Park. We're both really excited for this, but check this out. Last night, the power dropped down to 90% and our drive were back up to 100%. I guess when you're driving that much distance, you don't really need solar panels too much. Plus, I can always upgrade that DC to DC charger to charge that at near enough double the wattage with a 50 amp charger. Look how badass the van looks. You wait until the next video when you see how I installed everything that's new on that. I fully expected Jacob to be quite spooked out in the forest last night, but he wasn't. But the thing is, we didn't expect to come here and this is quite a distance to the forest, so I don't think we're going back there tonight, but it's gonna be interesting to see where we stop tonight, because I haven't got a clue. This is a cool little enclosure, isn't it? What is it? Oh! It's Billy. Billy, the, is he stuck on that rock? <laughs> There's an um, iguana in here somewhere, Jacob. Ah, oh, there he is. It's a green iguana. Hello, matey, how are you doing? Wow, that's so fascinating to see, isn't it? I don't think he likes tomatoes. The heart of the Amazon. Don't look behind you. I wouldn't like to be on the receiving end of that. But we've got... A, oh, look at this. Oh, this looks super cool, doesn't it? Wow. Oh, oh it's the sea lions. Wow. Oh, God, look at the size of him. That's insane. Look at this for a penguin enclosure. You've got a few there. Look at them all down there. Absolutely loving life, aren't they? Oh my god, they're huge! We were just on our way to tonight's park up after an absolutely amazing day at the zoo. And we were just generally talking about like what's happening right here, just the normal sort of chit chat that you do. And I was on about how one of my friends has got a big camp out, dug down camp out this weekend. A couple hundred camper vans, bit of music, big marquee. And he was like dead excited, like he wanted to go. I was like, do you want to go? And he goes, Yeah, let's go. I was like, You sure? It's like over nearly four hours away yeah let's go so guess what essex to rotherham now dubbed out camp out Hooton lodge here we go it might be a little bit dark by the time we get there though are you excited yeah <laughs> We're just pulling in there's the dock side look at that 181 miles three hours and 34 minutes and i'm thinking which way did it say for the dock jacob straight on yes Let's head up and go and say hi to uh, a few a few of me good old mates. Look at the lights, all the flagpoles lighting up the whole of Rotherham right now. We've been in, we've said our hellos, we've got our wristbands. Shall we go and see what it's all about? Heck yes! <laughs> Over 300 camper vans all in one spot, all because of the dubbed out community. It's on Facebook, go check them out. That's the marquee we're going to for a bit of a dance. <laughs> He's loving this, talking to me mates about all these. He made the mistake of saying, what did you do today? Jacob's got a ton of pictures to do with actual the zoo and stuff. Three hours later, they're still showing pictures. <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> I don't 
I'm well chuffed that he's enjoying this. We've got ice cream van, pizza hut, uh, food, another bar. We've got a half drunken Lee over there. How are you liking it? I'm too young for these jobs. <laughs> there we go. It's coming up to, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night. We're gonna start getting our head down. Have you had a good night though? Yeah, he's loved it. What a beautiful night as well. It's like literally a crystal clear sky. The wind's picked up a little bit. It's going to be a cold one. Dubbed out festival. Dubbed out camp out, living up to the name as always. Perfect night. Are you happy you came, little man? Yeah. Cool. Should we get back into the van where it's a little bit warmer? Yeah. We've had the heating on. The van is just part there. We've got some friends here, actually. I want to go and see Katie, van hippie. She's around somewhere. I was hoping to see her out in the tent tonight, but she wasn't there. I didn't didn't see her we have to go see her and her family we've got some other people we're going to go and see tomorrow it's going to be an awesome morning the van looks awesome oh what a good night you had a good night little man yeah well, it's been a good one hasn't it you've met a load of my friends as well you've had some good music i feel dead old because he didn't know most of the music so that's something i've got to train him on in the future yeah. definitely yeah your first dubbed out camp out, what do you think loving it there you go he's already asking can we come back next year i'm not being funny this one at Hooton Lodge happens a couple of times a year. The one at Inglenook Farm over in the northwest, that happens a couple of times a year. Then they've got the big one, the Dubbed Out Festival. And like 2024, this year's had like Kelly Lorena, um, K Class, it had E17, all awesome headliners. It was absolutely awesome. I've done a video for that, so I'll link it down in the description down below. We're going to wind down for the night. It's a nice early ish night considering it's a Dubbed Out Camp Out. But. You've got to stick to routine, haven't you? The next morning, we're coming for a little walk. There's a little bit of a hill. So I wanted to show Jacob all the camper vans parked up. Look at that, Jacob. All those camper vans there. <laughs> but it's not just those ones. There's a few over that side as well. Can I see ours? Yeah. Where's ours then? Oh, oh yeah. Just there. sticking up over there. That's quite cool, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I see it now. Yeah. It's amazing how many crafters are there. Yeah, our van suits it here now. There's a children's park here at Hooton Lodge. <laughs> You're chilling. <laughs> what a way to wind down from the dubbed out camp out. We've even bumped into Katie from Van Hippie. Jacob's having to go on eco mode. Remember, the links are in the description for this scooter. Yeah, don't crash. <laughs> got a long drive today i've got four hours back to great yarmouth to drop jacob off then i've got five hours to go back up to the northwest where i've got a shift in work tomorrow so uh burning some calories off on the hoot and lodge park are you ready yes <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god <laughs> <laughs> 69 quid for the first fuel stop. I'm gonna to have to fuel up again sometime throughout this journey. That's Jacob dropped off 167 mile later, 32 miles to the gallon average. I'm proud of that. And that is that. 410 miles I've done since I started the engine. Eight hours, 44 minutes with an average speed of 47 miles an hour. Average miles per gallon, 31.1 miles per gallon. Thanks for tuning in guys. If you're new around here, please subscribe.